going to talk a little bit about the components that we're using for this build. Uh, the frame is uh, just a CCM 18 inch uh, ladies uh, bike frame. Uh, decidedly depart department store quality, but uh, it's a good sturdy frame, even if it is a bit heavy. And it's steel, which uh, is very easy to work with and uh, the best material to work with for this kind of uh, project because you can manipulate the uh, dropout spacing uh, very easily. And uh, I'll throw a picture in here of what the bike looked like before I tore it down and painted it. For the drivetrain, I'm using a Sturmy Archer uh, XRF5 five-speed internal gear hub. Uh, I have one of these on one of my other bikes and uh, it works great. I think it's a very good uh, candidate for this type of uh, bike. This bike is not for severe service, it's just for recreational riding, uh, you know, rail trails and uh, back roads, that sort of thing. I'm not going to be doing a lot of hill climbing or anything like that. The uh, motor is a Wilderness Energy. 450 watt brushless 36 volt front hub motor. It's exactly the same motor that I put into this bike. This is a conversion that I did, uh, oh, I guess about five years ago for my wife. And the reason I'm building the new one is because uh, this one is a 700C wheel bike and uh, she's just finding it too cumbersome. Uh, Frankly, it handles like a tank. Never been able to do anything about that. So, uh, what I'm hoping is that with the 26-inch wheel uh, and uh, you know different frame angles and that sort of thing, that uh, we can make a better handling bike for. Her. But the um, the motor has been uh, flawless. Like it's performed very well over the last five years. Given no trouble at all. The battery pack is um, 36 volt. Uh, it's three 12 volt 7 amp hour lead acid batteries. Not a huge amount of capacity. I'd much rather have um, uh, 12 amp hour batteries, but uh, you know, this one here has been, uh, been working quite well for the type of riding that my wife uses it for. Uh, you know, sometimes by the end of the ride it's starting to get uh, sapped out, but it's still working fine after all these years, still taking a charge. It is heavy though, the battery pack, uh, I hung one on the scale there a while back and it seems to me it was about 16 pounds. I'm going to check this one as well. In another video I showed the fabricating of the safety tabs. Uh, I put them there to reinforce the front dropouts. One of the issues with the hub motor is that uh, the axle torques on the dropouts and the dropouts are not designed to withstand that torque. Particularly the right dropout, which has to be filed out square to uh, accommodate the anti-rotation tab. So, uh, just uh, to be on the safe side, I made these safety tabs to reinforce it. And uh, just gives me a little bit more peace of mind. Now with this frame, we're a little bit limited what we can use for brakes because uh, it's got about a 90 millimeter reach. So we're pretty well uh, limited to a single pivot brakes. So I'm going to use the best uh, that I can find for a single pivot. Uh, the Tektros are about as good as they get for this sort of an application. Uh, I'm going to upgrade the pads to uh, cool stop salmons just to give it the most braking power I can get out of it. Uh, these brakes are somewhat marginal, but it's not a, like I said, it's not a uh, extreme severe service bike so it's not like it's going to be doing big hills or that sort of thing but uh, I will definitely work to uh, make the brake system as effective as I can with what I've got to work with. The controller has a key switch for turning it off and on uh, but as I did with the other bike I'm going to bypass that and wire a switch at the handlebars for, for on off so that it can be controlled at that point. It comes with a brake lever with a kill switch so that when you hit the brakes it cuts the power but 
this brake lever is it's junk really um, you know it's threaded into a plastic body here and uh, it just uh, as I found with the other one it just doesn't stand up so uh, I will be discarding that lever and just bypassing it but uh, in so doing uh, definitely uh, want to have a kill switch right you know easily at hand so that if it does stick on and uh, you can't stop it that you can just at least reach for the kill switch this is the uh, the hand control it mounts just um, next to the uh, the right shifter between the shifter and the brake lever and uh, you do have to hold your hand on it so theoretically, you know, it should be uh, like a dead man switch. As long as soon as you let it go, it should cut the power. And it comes with the charger. So I have two of those now because I have a charger with the other kit. The other kit on the other bike is identical to this in every way. The only difference is that I've built this one into a 26-inch wheel. Uh, wheel rims are Vuelta, double wall rim and I'm using these on a couple of bikes now and they seem to be of uh, pretty good quality they're just a pinned seam rim but uh, I've had no difficulty with building them getting even tension around the seam or anything they're eyeleted so it uh, appears to be a nice strong rim and of course uh, Wheel removal is a bit of a pain with all of the hardware I've got on there, so I want to minimize that, uh, minimize flats. And the best way to do that is with the Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires, I've found. I've got all but a couple of my bikes running on these tires now, and I'm swearing by them. Like, I, I, I just don't get puncture flats. Now, that I've said that, I'll probably go out and get one today, but uh, it's been years since I've had a puncture flat on any of these tires. Spokes I'm using are Supreme single butted 13 14 gauge. 13 gauge at the elbow, 14 gauge at the uh, nipple end. Uh, very strong spoke. And uh, I think uh, necessary with the hub motor because the, uh, the holes, the spoke holes are actually larger than a 13 gauge. They would, they would take an even larger spoke than that. But uh, these are a pretty strong spoke. Because of the large diameter of the hub flange, uh, we just went one cross on the, uh, the front wheel build. The rear hub, I could go either two cross or three cross, but uh, I've chosen to go three cross with this one. My other uh, XRF5 uh, large flange hub is in a 26 inch wheel, and I built that one three cross about five years ago, and uh, it's held up very well. So. Uh, other than that, uh, I will be putting fenders on the bike and a sturdy two-legged kickstand. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get this thing done in the next couple weeks with whatever spare time I can scratch up.